Hello and welcome to the first episode of my Gaia 2 beginner tutorial series. In this episode I'm going to explain what Gaia is and how to use it to create and texture a basic landscape. We'll also show a few useful new features that were not present in Gaia 1. Gaia is a node-based procedural terrain generation program that is used to create landscapes for games, EFX and in combination with World Painter, even for Minecraft. Currently Gaia is only available on Windows. You can download it here on the official website. The link is in the description. By default you will have the Community Edition, which is free but limited to an export resolution of 1K. There are three different paid versions. The Indie version, the Professional version and an Enterprise license. I am going to use the Professional version, but everything I do in this tutorial can also be done in the free Community version. When you're trying to install Gaia, Windows might complain. Just click on more info and then on install anyway. Gaia's interface is split into three main sections. The viewport at the top, the graph at the bottom and the parameters on the right side. The viewport shows your terrain. You can scroll to zoom, orbit with the left mouse button and pan with the middle mouse button. On the top right of the viewport you can change the viewport resolution of your terrain. Higher resolutions are more resource intensive and take longer to build but are more detailed. The viewport resolution does not affect your export resolution. The graph is where you create and connect nodes. You can pan with the middle mouse button and scroll to zoom. On the right side you can see the parameters of the currently selected node. Here you can change what that node does. I recommend to change a few graph settings. First enable show grid. This currently does not get saved. You have to re-enable it every time you open the program. Then enable snap to grid and disable snap to items since it sometimes moves nodes around if you just click on them. While it might look like Gaia is a 3D program, it is in fact a 2.5D program which means that each point on the terrain in Gaia only has one height value. Terrain in Gaia is saved in the form of a height map. I'll explain this in Blender since it's easier to show it here. A height map is a grayscale image. The brightness of each pixel determines the height at that position. Black equals the lowest point or a height of 0, white the highest or a height of 1. Height maps do not store absolute height values. Now I'm going to displace this plane based on the height map. As you can see, the brighter an area is, the more it is displaced. Another important thing to keep in mind is that steep slopes are automatically less detailed. Imagine that each polygon here is a position on the map that has one height value assigned to it. As you can see, when the slope gets steeper, the area of which the height information gets stretched also grows, which leads to a less detailed result. In Gaia, you create terrain by creating and linking together nodes. The node is like a machine that takes an input, processes it and then outputs the results. To create a node, you can either open the toolbox on the left side of the graph and select the one that you want to use. I'm gonna grab a Perlin node from the primitive category or press either tab or right click to open the search menu. Here you can just type the name of the node or a shortcut. The mountain node belongs to the terrain category. You usually start with nodes from the primitive or terrain categories. Unlike most, these nodes do not require an input to work. Next, I recommend to change the way the toolbox is displayed. As you can see, all the categories are split into these subcategories. If you go to Tools, Options, Workspace, then set Organization to Show All. We're now able to see all the nodes that belong to a category right away. Now you can change the parameters of the mount node. You can for example change the scale, the height, or even the style, which will lead to a completely different result. Just play around until you get a result that you like. Mm, 
Yeah, I kind of like this. Your viewport shows the currently selected or the pinned node. You can pin a node by right clicking on it and selecting a lock preview or by clicking on it and pressing F. Then it's marked with this green icon. After you have a basic shape, it's usually a good idea to apply some kind of effect to it. There are two categories of nodes that are usually used for this. The modify and the surface nodes. In this case, I'm going to use the Fractal Terrace node from the Surface category. Drag the output from the Mountain node to the upper input to connect the node. This node creates these terraces and gives you a lot of control over their shape. First, I'll pick a seed that I like, then I'll change the spacing and as a final step I'll reduce the intensity a bit. At the bottom of the properties panel there are a bunch of modifiers. These are like post-process effects that change the output of the node. You can for example auto-level a node, which forces the output to use the full range from 0 to 1. This can be very useful when creating masks. You can also drop the result to the floor, which is easier to see on the Perlin node. If you click on the icon on the left or press M, you can open a panel that allows you to use a few more modifiers. Some of these, like height and slope, act like masks and allow you to quickly control the effect without additional nodes. Here I'm gonna use height to restrict the effect to the upper half of the mountain. I'll also add a bit of distortion to get a more natural result. There are a few different erosion nodes, all of them under the Simulate category. The Regular Erosion node, Erosion 2 and Easy Erosion. Erosion is basically the Gaia 1 erosion node. Erosion 2 is a new and super fast node with different settings. Easy Erosion is a simpler node based on presets, similar to the Wizard node in Gaia 1. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Easy Erosion node. Here you can see that the different presets lead to completely different results. You can also increase or decrease the influence a bit. As you can see with the Fractal Terrace and the Erosion nodes, some nodes have multiple outputs. The one at the top that's just called output, is the primary output that is displayed when you click on the node. Just the terrain with the effect of the node applied. You can visualize the other outputs easily by creating a few adjust nodes and connecting them. The adjust node allows you to use post-process settings as parameters and doesn't change its output unless you change the parameters. Each output in Gaia is basically just an image, but outputs can be split to three types. Height, mask and color. Both height and mask are grayscale images and can be used interchangeably, but usually fulfill different roles. Height is just the height map of a landscape and mask is usually used to select a part of the terrain. You can switch between the height and mask display modes by clicking on the node and pressing T. Color is just a regular colorful image that's used as a texture. Next. I'm going to add a bit of snow. The snow node simulates snowfall. You can use the parameters to control the behavior of the snow. If you want to reset a node to its default settings, you can do so at the top. In this case, I'm just going to use snow line to restrict the snow to the upper half of the mountain. Now that the basic terrain is done, I'm going to create a choke point node. This is a node that does nothing, but is really useful to organize the graph. Since the next step is the texturing, 
and that usually requires a bunch of nodes that take the final terrain as an input. This allows me to make further changes to the terrain without having to reconnect all of those nodes. I can just plug the new final result into the choke point. The easiest way to texture a landscape is to use a set map. A set map is a custom gradient that is mapped to the grayscale values of its input. You have a lot of options here. I'll use the new set map number 6. Here you can see the left side of the gradient is mapped to the low values and the right to the top of the terrain. But usually, when you want to texture the terrain, you don't just want to assign a color to the terrain based on the height. There are two nodes specifically for this purpose. Texture Base and Texturizer. In this case I'm going to use Texture Base. Both of these nodes generate a base for textures based on flow maps, the slope of the terrain and other things. This leads to a much more interesting texture. You can also adjust the parameters, but I'm just going to leave them the way they are. Since I don't like this red and white mix, I'm going to pick a nice grassy set map from the green category. This is a great point to use one of my favorite Gaia features, portals. You can turn any output of any node into a portal and then remotely access that output without connecting a wire. This can be very useful for outputs that are reused often, especially on larger graphs. In this case I'm adding a portal to the choke point node. You can create and access portals by clicking on a node and pressing P and then selecting the output that you want to turn into a portal, the input that you want to connect one to. While there are a lot of colorful set maps, it gives you a lot more control when you manually combine multiple set maps based on terrain features. First, I'm going to create another set map node and pick some kind of brown color. To combine these two maps, I will use the Combine node, one of the most important nodes in Gaia. To select the part of the terrain that I want to texture differently, I need a mask. The mask determines where the effect of the node is applied. Black pixels remain unchanged, the brighter pixel the stronger the effect. This can be done with most nodes. For this I will use the flow node. This node simulates the flow of water and gives you a grayscale mask of the result. It takes the final height map as an input. Output of the first height map goes into the first input of the combine mode, the other in the second. The output of the flow node goes into the mask port. In the regular blend mode, the combine node just replaces the first input with the second. This already looks a lot more interesting, but I want to texture the rock differently as well. For this I will create another set map and pick a color for the rock. There is another quicker way to create a combine node. Drag the output of one node onto the output of another. To mask the rock I am going to use a slope node. It also takes a regular height map as an input. The range parameter selects the highest and lowest angle. The falloff creates a gradient based on the slope around the edge to make the transition less harsh. I'll increase the maximum range to 90 degrees and set the minimum to something that looks good. The last thing that's missing now is the snow. It can easily be added by connecting the snow output of the snow node to a combine node set to add. In this mode the node just adds the values of each pixel. 
Since everything that isn't snow is black or has a value of 0 and the snow is white or 1, it will just color the snow white. You could also use the snow as a mask and use another set map as a texture for the snow. In the beginning I mentioned that Gaia is a procedural landscape creation tool. This means that everything you do in Gaia is non-destructive. If you make any changes to your terrain with a node, the input remains unchanged. It also allows you to plug another input into a node and apply the same effect. If I plug the Perlin node into the Fractal Terrace node and go back to the end, you can see what I mean. I can also pin the final node with F and adjust any of the other parameters to see their impact on the landscape. I'm going to adjust a few nodes to get a better looking result. Before you can export your terrain, you first need to select the nodes that you want to export. There are two ways to do this. First, you can mark a node for export, either by right-clicking on the node and selecting Mark for Export, or by clicking on the node and pressing F3. The other option is to use the Export node. The advantage of the Export node is that you can select the file format in which you want to export in the node parameters. If you want to change the format of a marked node, you can do this under Project, Build Settings, Nodes. Here you can also change the export resolution, but with the Community Edition you are limited to a maximum of 1K. I am going to use export nodes to export the final height map and the final color map. You can change the name of the exported files by renaming the node either by right-clicking on it and selecting Rename, or by clicking on the node and pressing F2. I'm going to leave the height map at .dxr, but I'll switch the color map to the 16-bit PNG format. Here you can see the final result in Blender. An annotated version of this project is available for free on Gumroad. The link is in the description. This is just the first episode of my beginner series. If you have any questions or topics for future tutorials, please let me know in the comments. Goodbye!